Welcome to the round table with Vienna White, episode 84. I'm one of your hosts, Millie Rouge. And I'm your other host, Marissa Kay. And together we make up the band Vienna White from Edmonton, Canada. This round table is a Yeg Music production. Marissa, could you start us off today by introducing the guests that we have on the show today? Absolutely. We have Edani, Luke Hunter, Hi. Ian mm-hmm. Wilson, Liam Doyle, and the Best Bad Influence. Welcome everybody to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. We're very excited to talk about uh, music from Scotland today. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go around the room. We're gonna give you guys a chance to introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about yourselves in about 30 seconds or less. Mm -hmm. So Edeni, can we start with you guys? Hi everyone. So we're Edeni. I'm French, she's Italian. Uh, And we live in Scotland. And we live in Scotland, yeah. We do music in the genre of like indie tronica, mm. um, indie rock, this kind of stuff, like Radiohead, um, All York, yeah, yeah, this kind of stuff. Uh, our project is very recent. We started like nine months ago. Yeah. And, uh, but we've been doing music for all our lives, basically. Yeah. We've just released a few cover songs in our genre. Mm. They're totally our style. Uh, and we will be releasing our first EP very soon. Um, starting releasing the first albums in a, like approximately few months. months, yeah. And uh, we can't wait. <laughs> very exciting. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Luke, can we get you next? Uh, hi, I'm Luke Hunter. Uh, I'm a solo musician from just outside of Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, I write in the genre of indie pop uh, and dream pop sort of stuff. Uh, influenced by bands uh, like Queen, The Beatles, The 1975, um, those sort of bands. And yeah, I've been releasing music uh, since 2017, but music has always been uh, my main passion. So I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Ian. Hello, uh, I'm Ian, Ian Wilson, um, and I'm currently recording and writing synth pop tracks and um, so I'm on a record label called We Studio Records which is in Stornoway right up the right up the top of Scotland um, and I'm currently about to release an album of synth pop music. Awesome very exciting. Uh, Liam can we get you next? Yep uh, so my name is Liam Doyle um, I'm a 26 year old singer songwriter um, from Glasgow I've been doing it for um, sort of full time, maybe the past five, six years. Um, and I've released uh, an EP, I've released singles uh, as well. Um, and yeah, I kind of, I love all the sort of emotional, um, very lyric focused um, stuff. And I would say I listen a lot to people like Gabriel mm-hmm. Appling, Co- uh, Coda Line, um, singer songwriter kind of, um stuff but i'm trying to i'm i'm branch, going to be branching out into some synthy kind of stuff as well um but yeah wonderful thank you so much for sharing and the best bad influence alex can we get you to introduce the band all right uh alexander here uh sing and play guitar for the best bad influence for a uh, slightly 1950s rockabilly kind of rock and roll band uh We've been playing for about three two to three years along that kind of line. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, uh, everybody, for sharing your musical journeys. I'm very excited to dive into this topic today. Yes. Uh, in case you're wondering, our topic of the day <laughs> is music from Scotland. So <laughs> I'm very excited. So to start it off, uh, according to Creative Scotland, there are over 10,000 people employed in music in Scotland. And over 40% are freelancers. So as you all are either currently or used to be freelancer musicians, what would you say were or are the biggest struggles with pursuing a music career as an independent artist in Scotland? So like, um, I think the struggles in Scotland are pretty much the same than everywhere, everywhere else, to be honest. Um, it mm-hmm. would be like mostly competition between bands because there's so many music and nowadays everyone can produce music and like it's very difficult to cut through the noise but I've like to me is like Scotland helps a lot in a uh, indie musician with like funding and for the PR like with the PRS for example or 
they 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 provide with a lot of ways to to develop uh, music. There's the MU as well, like Musician Union. Um, I don't know what you guys think about this, but it's uh, yeah. yeah I, so I, I think that there's a lot of opportunities. Um, there's a lot of yeah. gig um, opportunities and and things like that as well. I think um, I I busk a lot. I busk a lot to fund. Um, recording and things like that and um and days when i'm not i'm not gigging or um whatever it is it's nice to get out and, and play you know to people that you would never see i feel like the busking i actually know of the best uh, bad influence through busking on on the streets of glasgow as well um yeah. so yeah it, it's and the community within buskers are, are very kind of of course we're all out doing doing our own thing but we're, we're always happy to help each other and um, so i think it's a, a very kind of inclusive um vibe and and music in scotland in general i do feel a lot of the time one of the obstacles um and putting the music out is similar to anywhere really is a, a lot of the time you could you could have the, you could sound like adele you could have the best voice ever you know not that i'm a huge fan of adele but it's an, an example you know and a lot of the time it comes down to money it comes down to how much you can put into marketing um and promotion um which not everyone has you know so it's, it's opportunities a lot of the time money brings mm. opportunities so i was gonna say that about money as well because yeah. i mean most venues and promoters you get to play within the within the city they take quite big percentage splits of your of your ticket sales so sometimes if you're playing like king tuts for instance they take upwards of like 70 percent of your ticket sales so if you're 10 pound a ticket you're only earning like what like three quid a ticket so unless you're shifting masses and masses of tickets then the promoters make more money than the musicians out of, out of stuff like that too so if i could just jump in there's like a big thing to say about uh bands having a completely different set of struggles as well for like independent musicians because we kind of have folk to fall back on we've got the whole band beside and rallying and we can talk and discuss with us if you're a solo musician especially just you know acoustic and stuff there's a lot i feel as though it would be a lot harder to do that kind of stuff. Of course, that's me just speculating because I've never done it myself. But uh, I think there's definitely something to be said in that the struggles are maybe no, you know, less or more so, but at the very least, they're different. Yeah. I, I actually, I, I think that with, um, like, for example, recording and um, and releasing, if you're solo, you've got a certain amount of time in the studio um, and, and you've got a budget that, that you can't go past most of the time. Um so if you get something that you're not 100% happy with, you're fighting with yourself. You're thinking, do I release this and put out something that I'm, I know that I'm not I'm not 100% happy with, but I don't I can't do anything about it. Um, whereas maybe with a band, you're able to bounce money around, you know, and, and help each other out that way. If, um, and I, I think that's been a big struggle of, of being a solo musician, for sure. So just personal experience, we kind of we've been doing the same. You know, we busk we busk to fund. The, the music habit, you know, and uh, we've been trying, this is a thing we've been doing recently, we're trying to get some singles out there now, uh, some some more, and that's, it's the exact same for bands, it's, you know, it's just c pulling money together as well, it's, uh, I think money is the biggest thing in music, because obviously, oh, yeah. especially new, there's a lot less for us to actually do to accrue some funding, but uh, I know it's just, I think money is the same for everybody, no matter if you're a band, solo, or, you know, whatever else there is i think with the creative scotland grants as well like i mean you do get grants for that but i mean unless you've got somebody that's clued up on applying for these grants and stuff it, it's countless oh, hours that i mean you're not you're going to put in these hours and you might not fit the criteria for the funding and stuff so i think it's it's quite difficult for that to to try and actually get funding that's why like obviously there are a lot of people that want to apply to grants and like there's a lot of competition because there are so many people obviously um, they want to make music and... It depends on your genre as well. Yeah. Like, I know there are a lot of, uh, like, they, they, they really put money on uh, Kaelic and, like, traditional Scotland music, you know, but not size. so much on, yeah, emerging new style music, maybe. Me, as a musician from Edinburgh, I think the opportunity is, there are, like, quite a good amount of opportunities especially with like the gigging scene uh, obviously not at the moment but the gigging scene in Edinburgh and Glasgow they're really great and there's a sense of community within like you know Edinburgh and Glasgow 
uh, between musicians and especially in Edinburgh with the Fringe Festival, the opportunity for unsigned independent musicians, whether that be solo or, or bands, you know, the opportunities there, like any, anyone can sign up to be a part of the Fringe uh, and busk on like the Royal Mile or the High Street and stuff like that. And that's, again, a, a great way to make income to then fund, you know, your career as a freelance musician. So the opportunity is there. Um, it's just, you know, trying to work with it and find it and stuff like that. That's uh, and it, it's interesting that you meant that uh, you guys have mentioned before how it's always difficult for artists, no matter how big of an artist you are, small artist, large artist, independent artist, band, it's always hard to get that kind of funding. So you have to find those creative ways to make that income and try to gain that sort of following and, and get people's attention. Um, and it's interesting that you bring up like grants and stuff because we have something very similar in Canada here. Mm -hmm. And I know that when we write grants, a lot of the time when you're writing a grant, it can be very, it can be a lot easier to get a grant if you have some sort of like cultural tie in. So, I mean, when we think of music from Scotland, we immediately, our minds go to bagpipes and folk music. Um, do you guys find yourself trying to distance your music from these traditional sounds of Scottish music, or is that something you actually strive to include? Um, well, for me personally, my, my genre doesn't really utilize much bagpipe and or, or, uh, or folk music elements um, since I'm writing in the indie pop genre. Um, I mean, I, the, I think the bagpipe sounds great. You know, it sounds great when it's being played uh, whether that be on Princess Street or anywhere, really. I, I think it's a cool instrument, but I've never really felt the need to use it in one of my songs uh, or any, any of my compositions or anything like that. And yeah, I, I, I don't think there's any elements of, of folk music, maybe apart from some storytelling in songwriting. You know, that's very common in folk music. But apart from that element, uh, there isn't much for me personally uh, in terms of, you know, traditional Scottish music uh, that I'm using in, in my own music, but I don't know about anyone else. Well, I've thought about this quite a lot, actually, because we do, like, Americana kind of stuff with the best bad influence, 1950s, the kind of American origin music. And uh, so we're, like, the furthest we can be from being, like, our home music. And, like, we've been told before that we, people don't think we're Scottish until we talk, and it's kind of like a sense of identity thing, like, they don't expect you're Scottish unless you've got the bagpipes blaring and all that kind of stuff. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, apart from that, never really felt the need as a part to fit the category of a Scotsman, I suppose. Yeah, so I, when I, I actually started music out playing the bagpipes, so I like started playing music like at six years old, and I played the bagpipes. I've played the bagpipes ever since. I've been like uh, won world championships with pipe bands and stuff, so I was addicted to the bagpipes like <laughs> for up until like I was like twenty two, and um, so I started all my music um, singing in a folk band called Heron Valley so they're kind of like a big folk, uh, folk band within the kind of folk scene and um, then that kind of gradually influenced me to kind of get into other aspects of music and then ended up at synth pop but I mean personally for me I do find myself trying to get away from the pipes from like a kind of um, a personal view because everyone that knows me knows I to play the pipes so it's like when somebody says I'm going to play a gig they're like oh you'll be getting the pipes out again but it's like no the genre of music I'm doing is totally different so um yeah. but you know I think I think they're great for I think the pipes are great and as the as the last guys were saying like I mean as soon as you, as soon as you see bagpipes you think of Scotland so I love the pipes until I started busking <laughs> and then when there's a pipe up a little bit away, there's just no getting away from the sound. Um, it's so loud, eh? Yeah, but uh, but in all seriousness, I, I I've never felt that I needed to distance myself from it. Um, I like I enjoy the sound and uh, I I sing a lot, like maybe more so, and I kind of look at them as two separate things, like the busking side and 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 um, my personal musician sort of side. Um I love to sing a lot of the Scottish traditional sort of like Wild Mountain Time and, and songs like that. I just think they're beautiful songs. Um so I I, I do appreciate it. Um I just don't I, if 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 a song came around and if I wrote wrote a song and I thought this could do with some um bagpipes mixed in there, I would I would I would do it. Definitely. Use a shout. 
um that's incredible that you that you played bagpipes for like ever Um, that's amazing uh that just like satisfied my whole heart i was really hoping like one of you guys would have played bagpipes so it made me so happy (laughs) (laughs) Um, amazing yeah because it's and it's funny how like sometimes you know with anyone who has like this big cultural background sometimes they try to really distance themselves from it so it's Mm -hmm. it's refreshing to hear that you know, you try to include at least a little bit of some of it, or like, even if you have the background, you have the knowledge of it, um, still trying to be respectful of that. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned, like you were, uh, I don't remember who was saying it, but they were like, yeah, I love the bagpipes until I was, uh, until bus came, <laughs> which is hilarious yeah. because I mean, I was in, Ed- I was in Edinburgh a few years ago. Um, and it happened to be during the fringe festival and like, there was music everywhere. And the main thing I noticed was like bagpipes everywhere. Um, so I wanted to know, how do you find that tourism impacts your music, uh, being heard outside of Scotland? Does it help you at all to try to focus more on pushing your music through social media to fans outside of your area? I mean, personally, I don't have much experience in this, so maybe someone else could answer. But I mean, I try to concentrate with my music. I try to concentrate on like Glasgow first, and then I'm I'm trying to grow it in that way, you know, so I try to grow it in like kind of smaller areas as opposed to just um, a vast, a vast uh, audience. So maybe somebody else has got a better, a better experience with that. I, I've noticed um, over the years, like I, I, I do focus a lot obviously heavily on, on the, the Glasgow scene and, and the sort of Scot- Scotland scene. Um, but I do find that I meet, and I've, a lot of people have came to shows or um, I've seen me in the street playing or, or something like that. And it, it really has made an impact on Facebook comments, you know, I would say 50% of the people that comment on, on my things on Facebook are not from Scotland. So it definitely does does make a, make a difference for sure. Yeah. I personally, like, um, we've never played at the Fringe because we've never had the opportunity as the last year, well, with the pandemic, we stayed in, in Dundee. But, um, yeah, I've seen that, like, the previous years, I've seen that whoever was playing, doesn't matter what genre of music was playing, it was incredible. The interaction they could manage to get with tourists, that anyone, like there were some people playing classical music and get getting a lot of feedback and a lot of people talking to them. So it, I think that the tourism, obviously it's a very good thing for uh, musicians, independent musicians in Scotland and things like that. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've played the Edinburgh Fringe Festival uh, festival since 2012, um, every year up till this year. Uh, and, you know, the variety, as, as you were saying just there, like the variety in genre and also acts in general is like so vast. You can get anything at the Fringe Festival. And I think that's why it works so well is because like whoever's coming to watch from wherever they're coming from, they're gonna find something that like suits them, like suits what they want to hear or what they want to see. So I think the variety for the French festival is so vital to appeal to, you know, the number of people that come to Edinburgh to see anything really. And you know, in terms of like focusing on people that are not necessarily from Scotland and stuff, I think for me. I mean, apart from like CD sales while busking to people like that are tourists in, in Scotland, um, I haven't really focused much on doing stuff outside of Scotland, apart from the UK in general. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to focus on building a fan base in my city and then, you know, moving moving out, uh, like, like Ian said, you know, focus on your sort of home base and then branch out after that. I could uh, jump in here just due to kind of like the the nature of what uh, we play, you know, the rockabilly stuff. It's it's got a very broad appeal actually out with Scotland, and there's not very many Scottish, uh, you know, rockabilly uh, festivals or like gigs or anything like that, you know, until till someone puts them on. Uh, and so when it comes to like you know Europe or America or Japan. The rockabilly is like massive out there, but when you get into here, there's you know, I still there's quite there's quite a few bands. We are we are one of many, uh, but I think it's it's interesting to see how many folk are like they, they kind of know Johnny B. Good the song, they kind of know 
you know, some of these rockabilly rock and roll songs, and then uh, <laughs> and then you tell them what genre it is. It's like, oh, never never heard of that before. You're you're lying. You know, it's stuff. It's kind of it's odd to think how uh, this kind of music. Uh, it's so alien to Scotland, despite it being here since you know the fifties and you know the eighties and stuff. So it's quite interesting to see uh, that kind of influence on on our socials, where we have you know all these Scottish folk. We've we ever since Boskin uh, in Glasgow, we've grown you know uh, way more than we did before we started Boskin, and it's insane to see how many Scottish folk are now you know you know f just just realizing when the, you know. Oh, this is rockabilly. When if you were to go to like Europe or that, it'd probably be a little bit more, you know, people would know what you're talking about. But I think that's that's a very niche kind of area to look at, you know, if we're just focusing on one genre. Well, and I was gonna say it's funny that you bring that up with a giant like David Bowie looming behind you, <laughs> <laughs> talking about influences, and then he's just like talk about me. Um, I had no idea who that was. That's incredible. Um, well, I think this ties pretty perfectly because we were talking about Fringe Festival and performing live. So I actually wanted to hear some insight from you guys about um, what are some missteps that you see from other musicians in your local scene? Uh, whether they're online or at live shows, and why do you think so many musicians make those missteps? I think ego is one. Um, I think that that people need to kind of, you know, I don't want to be standing yeah. in the street playing and 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 the freezing cold and and sometimes you 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 feel like oh, I I shouldn't shouldn't be here kind of thing, but you're doing what you need to do to get to where you need to go. Um, and I think ego is kind of, a lot of people think that they're too good or they kind of look down their nose on, on um, busking and things like that. I just think you've got to, we don't we don't all get handouts. The majority of us don't get handouts. So we've got to, got to do what we've got to do to get there. Um, I, I find that and, and, and just sort of, if people are complimenting you or, or listening to your, your music, engage with them and, and be grateful and um, yeah, reply to their messages, things things like that. Yeah, I totally agree because I mean, for me, I've, a few years ago I played a gig, and it was like a man and his dog that were watching. Like it was a it was like a, a festival in East Lothian somewhere, and it was like I was last on, and I just thought right, I'm I'm gonna go and play it because you know someone's listening. There's one person here that you know two ears are better than none. Uh, and the dog was there as well. So, like, but like, you know, you've 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 got to separate that that ego. Like you said, you can't just go, you know, this that I, I I shouldn't be doing this. I'm I'm better than this or whatever. You can't do that. You need to you need to put in the groundwork. And you know, I, I have seen some people that have been like, you know, I don't need to do that. Some like it'll happen further down the line and stuff. But you you do you need to, you know, you need to be the hardest working musician in your town or you know, set yourself a goal. And sort of work towards that because well, the groundwork I is yeah totally and i know i know like through past experience that there's been times where i have um i, I a couple of years ago i had, had the opportunity to go to abbey road and record in abbey road and that was that was like a, a um a uk wide kind of voting system thing um and i know that that's because i engage with people and i'm grateful for people um comment on, on on my music and videos and things like that and i make the effort um they wouldn't have went to the trouble to do to vote for me and, and do that kind of thing if if i never so you, you kind of get what you you give out yeah yeah i've probably got a kind of uh i i, I totally agree with what you're saying as well but i mean i would I, if it was from a personal point of view i would just tell people to play the music they love and kind of stick to the music they love because there's so many times you'll get told to chop and change by somebody comes along and says oh if you do this change your genre or change your style a wee bit to this then uh oh we'll give you this you know, it's just uh <laughs> just stick to stick yeah stick to what you want to do and i mean at, at the end of the road as well it's like missteps create like come, come to create creativity you know so i mean a lot of the music you probably here and love has come from people making mistakes and you know striving to get to where they want to be through missteps so 
Yeah, yeah, I get that. I quite agree with yourself there as well. I especially when you're starting out, you're like trying your best to be straight like a people pleaser to like everyone. Like you're trying to meet everybody's needs, but it's quite unrealistic that every single person in that audience or just watching you is gonna be happy with everything, I suppose. So definitely be happy with yourself and what you're doing, like you're saying, like play what you love and then just see what happens with it, see what it takes you. I don't know, yeah, I also feel that uh, one of the biggest missteps for me is um, like young artists to just put up music and expect that um, everybody would be interested in it. And respond you know, quickly. And respond and like that, uh, they have a lot of expectation, you know, and they don't put into work, you know, to try to get uh, people to actually listen to it. Or even, even virtually, like on the social medias. Um, yeah, they just expect that just because they release the music, you know, that a lot of people will listen to it. And yeah. like, I know for me, you need to really kind of do a lot of work to get heard, you know, also now. Media. And a lot of people don't do that. Yeah, music, we were quite guilty of that, music. actually. Yeah, we were quite guilty yeah. of that as well. We like, released our first album, and then we're like, this is it, this is when it's all going to happen. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's, that's fair, up. you we know. You, you, should you, have you've done, yeah, you've done a lot of work, you know, you composed the song, you recorded it, you know, you released it and stuff. And, like, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, you, you think, oh, well, now I've done it, people should listen to it, and that's it. <laughs> exactly. But I think the work, the work, needs to be a bit uh, that's uh, the moment people. where you have to put the maximum of your energy yeah not, not you like everyone even us, even us uh, <laughs> like, yeah we don't do that enough you know yeah i think people you need to know as well like people don't owe you anything like they don't they don't owe you yeah, their exactly. time um that's the truth yeah, yeah it would be nice like i would love to just stick a song out and not have to do all the emails and things because it drives me <laughs> crazy um but yeah, but nobody owes you anything. Sometimes you can get a bit bitter or you can get a bit annoyed if it doesn't go the way and then you've just got to remind yourself that as, as annoying as it is. I know. I'm saying about that with the emails as well, if I could just jump in, it's like uh, that with the whole self-promotion thing. A lot of people will just uh, kind of write a song, they'll release it and, you know, the day you will, you know, the day the promotion, they'll get their socials on it and everything. But then they'll just kind of, they'll send a chain email or a chain message to like everybody, and again, I'm what TVBI are guilty of that. You know, it's happened before, but we realise it's so disingenuous to do that, especially if you're doing it to, you know, like if you, if friends on Instagram, or if it's doesn't matter if it's you know, them or an actual uh, big, uh, you know, it's NME or something like that. You try to email them, and then all the other magazines. You really need to take the time to email each of them in their tone. And especially if you're going to be emailing uh, like genre specific or a kind of vibe specific uh, articles, you really need to take care on what you're saying and how you're saying it. So I think that's something a lot of people do is they just kind of, they write something, they'll make something, you know, post it and then just chuck it into the wind and see what sticks, which I think is a really yeah. very, you know, immature way of doing it. But it's, I mean, learn for experience, you know. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like that uh, we talk about this all the time, how it's like the spaghetti to the wall metaphor where you just a lot of musicians like throw it just to see what sticks. But uh, like you can have the best song in the world. And if no one hears it, then what's the point? Right. Um, I think those are all fantastic points that yeah. you've made. Yeah. Like I, I, I mean, nailed hit the nail right on the head. I think. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. With uh, with all these missteps that we were talking about of yeah. artists posting their songs, spreading their music without actually talking about it, um, a lot of the time too, we've seen this in live shows as well. Like we've seen some missteps in live shows, mm -hmm. um, and it can be really tricky to kind of like gain your footing after that. Um, but on the other side of that, we've also seen a lot of really amazing shows come out of these like small acts that, uh, that put on these incredible shows. It's happened here in Edmonton as well. Like there's a lot of small artists that I've seen come through Edmonton that I'm like, wow, I need to follow them for the rest of my life. <laughs> and according to WandaLesters.com, Glasgow was rated one of the top place for concerts, uh, in the in the UK outside of London with eight venues in the top 100 of places to watch for gigs which is incredible 
Uh, what are some classic shows that you've seen at any of the Scotland venues that you will never forget for the rest of your life? Uh, oh yeah, I, I do agree that uh, Glasgow is definitely great for gigs. Every time I've been there, it's always been a great night. And uh, I specifically do remember quite well, quite a few of them actually. But there's uh, a gig that Bikini Bottoms were doing. They're a kind of a, a great band. They're like surf, psychobilly kind of stuff. Yeah, like the SpongeBob thing. It's great. And uh, they they were doing a gig, and Jack, the guitarist and singer, he was really wailing on the guitar. And all you hear is the clang of all the strings snapping. It wasn't all of them, obviously. It was like his uh, B string or something, and uh, it snapped. And but instead of like you know panic about it, he just keeps going. He's playing along, and uh, he gets to the end of it, and him and the audience are just joking about it, and it just becomes part of the show, which was great to see him kind of have an incident and then recover from it so well. So that's quite a memorable one for me. It's great. We um, we went to what was it last year? or a couple of years ago, yeah. We went to the um, SSC Hydro, the venue that looks like an armadillo, um, yeah. to, to watch um, Stephen Wilson. And it was awesome. Like, uh, his show was just beautiful. He's like a prog rock kind of artist. Yeah. And, um, like, we were, we were very happy with the, with the sound system and also, like, uh, all the the scene decoration there was this kind of net to separate the stage from the the viewers and they were projecting light yeah there was like yeah there was they were featuring uh, an artist so there was a singer but she couldn't be there so like they put the big uh, her big head you know singing it was like massive you know you were just immersed in it yeah it yeah. was just like, was like wow and the best like we were seated as well yeah it wasn't yeah we were, like, we were sitting down and which was a bit weird at first because like obviously when you go to to see to, to watch um, a gig uh, you expect to dance or like move around yeah. uh, so it was it was a bit constraining at the beginning but after it turned out to be very interesting as we were literally leaving the music and we were a hundred percent immersed you experienced the, the music in another way you know yeah it was cool yeah okay. uh, I, have, I have a similar kind of one where it's to the old, you know sensory overload uh, but this one's this one's a little bit less chipper. Uh, <laughs> my mum took me to see a band called Mogwai uh, in the, the Royal Conservatoire. Mm. I was about seven. I wasn't meant to go. It was her and her friend that were meant to go, but her friend couldn't make it, so she just took me. Didn't want to waste a ticket. And uh, that's where that show was really intense with lights and sound. And it's when I found out that uh, I had like uh, sensory ocular sensory something which basically causes migraines if I, if I get lights in my face too much. So I had a migraine that whole show and I had to leave early. But it was, yeah, it was, it was all right. It was fun. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I saw, um, I don't know if, it, if you ever heard of Tea in the Park, uh, but it was oh, like yeah. a massive, yeah, massive Scottish festival would have ch changed it over. Um, I was seven years ago and I remember seeing Mumford and Sons there. Um, I was... I mean, I was really drunk for most of it, so I I don't know if that's what made it amazing, but it was one of the best things I've ever seen. Um, and then I also saw Paolo Nettini on Hogmanay, um, oh, nice. at a place in Edinburgh. I'm not, it's like out, an outdoor venue, but it was beautiful, um, and it was just one of the the, the best. Gigs. And vocally, amazing. Um, he comes on, he's he's had. A couple of bottles of wine and a joint or whatever, and he sings, hits every note perfectly. Um, just that amazing, yeah. Was that in the gardens in Princess Street Gardens? Yeah, that, that's the one, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I think I, I, I never got the chance to go to Tea in the Park because it finished before I was old enough to go. Uh, and oh, no. <laughs> like the closest I got was Transmit, which is like the new version basically of Tea. Yeah. <laughs> And I went to see uh, Queen at Transmit uh, in 2018. And Queen are my like all-time number one band. Um, and they were supported by Texas, a, a Scottish band. Uh, and so that that was brilliant to get like two like cracking bands, and obviously my favourite band, uh, in in one day. Uh, and I was right at the front, like at the like the catwalk bit thing. Uh, so I was like as close to Brian May as I'll ever be. Uh, so. That, that was up there for me. that's that gig at Transmit. 
on the absolute other end of the spectrum from less capacity. I seen the uh, an Irish band called Hudson Taylor. Uh, oh. I seen yeah. them at uh, King Tuts, and it was probably about it was like full capacity of King Tuts for like a couple hundred, three hundred people, and like it was just the venue and everything just fitted them so well. Like the vocals were amazing, and Irish Irish <laughs> Irish bands are all just absolutely nuts, and it was just class, you know. Like uh, the whole thing was great. Yeah, so m- yeah. small venues sometimes are just the best, you know, for this kind of experience. Yeah. Less pest getting thrown about. <laughs> Well, and we actually, this leads really well because we, over the years, there's been names such as ACDC, Craig Armstrong, Annie Lennox, The Proclaimers, Travis, Texas, like you mentioned, uh, Wet Wet, and the Alan Parsons Project. So they've all originated in Scotland and gone to achieve international popularity. So I want to know, in your opinion, where do you think Scotland ranks in terms of the success in the music industry compared to other ma- major music industries? Uh, I think there's tons of stuff from Scotland that you don't realise is from Scotland. And I mean, you hear that it's from Scotland, you think, what? That's, that doesn't make sense because they were big in America. Uh, I can't really give any examples because I didn't prepare for that at all. But uh, I mean, the, oh, in fact, I've got my computer in front of me right now. Let me look this up. Because it's just it's simple. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, amazing. I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting this here. I'm, I'm, I'm careful. <laughs> just love the clacking of the keyboard. It's amazing. I know. <laughs> Hacking into the ground. Our producer right now is just like, oh my God, it's me. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, no, it's not coming up. Uh, never mind. Oh, I didn't know Susan Boyle was Scottish. How did I not know Susan Boyle was Scottish? <laughs> you know, I've seen her bus. She's been on my bus before. <laughs> Oh, everyone knows Susan Boyle but me, right? Fair play. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think Scot- Scotland ranks a lot higher than I think people would uh, think it does because there's tons of stuff that you've just, you've no idea Scottish, including Susan Boyle, that is, it gets big in America, it gets big in Europe, and it's, it's not what you think of traditional Scottish music because I don't really think there's that, you know, that's, despite coming from Scotland, it's the same with, you know, uh, well, traditional, I don't know, French music. I have no idea what that would be, but I, I, I would imagine everybody in France plays that. So it's kind of, it's funny to hear the assumption that we all play bagpipes and that. Uh, but yeah, I think Scotland like, ranks really high and a lot higher than a lot of folk would uh, get credit for. Yeah, I, from an, an outsider perspective, we're definitely we're from France and Italy, we can definitely say that here and in general in the UK, people really value music so much. And um, like people from all the ages uh, are really into interested in music and they pay for gigs and they support musicians. And for example, they even pay buskers. Like in Italy, it's very hard to get money when you busk. Um, it's just the culture is so different and so that makes a musician that, that makes a better life for musicians I guess right, maybe um, like musicians are more likely to get like famous or and heard yeah because, because of all the support yeah they got more support yeah absolutely right. uh, and it's such a small country as well you know I think it's amazing that there's so much talent in such yeah. a small country we can definitely tell there is a culture and we can see that the big difference from yeah over here compared sure. to Italy and France. I was surprised yeah. you never mentioned uh, Louis Capaldi as well because he's a he's one that's hitting the, the charts big time everywhere. Um yeah I think I think there's there's a lot of um sort of big uh, musicians from, from Scotland. Um it's the same as Ireland and, and different places um sort of in the UK. It's the UK does have a very good music scene. Um well well the, the, and like um, you were saying before there as well, the, the, there's a kind of, it's a culture thing, like the people are very interested um, and it, they're, they're willing to help out the sort of smaller, smaller acts to, to do um, as well as they can. So, mm. yeah, I think, I, I don't know how they would rank on a, a sort of global scale, but they're not bad for a, a country of five million or... <clears throat> number one. <laughs> <laughs> number one. <laughs> 
I think it's great for like small like grassroots venues and like festivals. There's so many like especially like traditional festivals, like but all these trad festivals get in all genres to play, you know. So like there's so many. There's like two or three festivals a weekend throughout the summer, like just in, in terms of like gigs to play and stuff. So it's it's quite good. Yeah, I'd say everything's inclusive. Like with us playing like kinda rockabilly stuff, like we've done gigs where we've been supported by like indie bands or stuff like that. And I mean you wouldn't think like you wouldn't picture them both together but i think it is true that the the music community is very close together tight knit even if they're totally different from each other yeah Yeah, and also the variety of music like we've noticed that here people really like any type of music and uh especially older people like let's say older or adult or even younger people anyone likes music and there are so many venues and also there are venues with that they play only specific type of music, genre of music, which is incredible. Like um, in many venues, there's always live music that again is quite rare, not yeah. not rare, but less common in, in France and Italy. So it's a, it's amazing. It's uh, it's funny that you bring yeah, up like France it. and Italy. Uh, we, one of our, one of our regulars on the stream, Natalie, uh, she's also French and she, she just made a comment that said people in France, I'm a musician. Other people, a what? <laughs> like, <that's> <laughs> um, yeah, and it's it's amazing to hear about all these strengths of the Scottish yeah. music scene. So, in your opinion, if you had to say what was one of Scotland's like major strengths as a whole, as like a music scene, um, what would you say Scotland's biggest strength is? Uh, I think we just mentioned it, and it's kind of how people are so passionate with music and like whatever their, their age or where they come from and they're all so supportive about musicians and I think it's the culture to be honest I think this this is the key here yeah I think That's I think it's culture. less it's, le- it's less kind of cut like if anyone's any one of you have spent time in London it's a lot more cutthroat I think that people are very kind of stabby in the back the second to get the chance not not everyone's a generalization but <laughs> But it's, yeah, it's kind yeah. of it's, it's a it's a thing, and I think um, genuinely people more times than not are likely to help you up here, and, and they want to help you, and, and musicians are willing to play on each other's mm-hmm. tracks and and um, yeah. lend a hand when they can, and I think that's quite rare um, a lot a lot of places. Yeah, I was just going to say you can get advice pretty much anywhere you turn within the kind of community of music. You know, if you've not done something before, you can, there's always somebody to ask and just get advice from people everyone's happy to help and then i was basically just going to say that like i wouldn't hesitate to ask anybody that i've met for a favor like if i've like if my amps gone dodgy or something like that and i know like somebody close by has got one i would definitely ask them because everybody is just so friendly and eager to help there's also something to be said about the the variety of music like the 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 scenes within the scene so i mean like uh, there's obviously uh, like the retro scene and stuff, which which we're we're part of, and uh, we knew a, I knew a band. Uh, I thought it was Alex. Alex knew them for, for seeing them busking, uh, and <laughs> we went busking one day, and then uh, uh, the main guy from that band came over and was like, "Here, I'm doing an open mic night tonight. Do I just come down? You know, do we? I mean, kind of do similar similar music. Do I just come down and do a wee stint?" And so we went down, and then we ended up being really good pals with this band and then we got to meet more bands through them and it's like the scenes within the scene are like expansive and really interconnected and they all cross over at some point as well and so there's that real uh, flavour and colour to be said about I mean that's just in Glasgow as well so uh, you know there's tons of stuff to look at there and by the way just before I wrap up my point I've got the Twitch chat open here and someone just said uh, where is it uh, one thing Scotland has is Shrek. Shrek is American. Shrek's got nothing to do with Scotland. That's a guy who did an approximation of a Scottish accent. Like, sorry. Like, yeah, we, we, didn't read, we didn't read that out. We didn't want technically, to read that one out. Technically, if we're going to get technical with it, technically Mike Myers is a Canadian. So, so really, it has more to do with Canada oh. than Scotland. <laughs> Oh, sorry. There you go. It's Canadian culture then. <laughs> Canadian culture. We just drink oh, maple syrup and talk about French people. That's our culture. We um, all live in swamps. Right? <laughs> 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 
Amazing. Not all of us. I would demonstrate my terrible Scottish accent, but I've been roasted about it before, so <laughs> we're not going to do that <laughs> right now. Well, you're not Scottish, so I'm here to tell you how good it is. Come on. <laughs> go, go, Bruce. Do it. I don't do want to do it. I'm do scared it. to do, do it. it. Alexa video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Alexa. Oh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. <clears throat> Alexa, play Something's Cooking in My Kitchen by Dana. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find, figure out where well, that's... Uh, oh, where I'm going to call it, but... That was like... Yeah. Right. That was like... A bit of South Ayrshire and a bit of Fife. <laughs> I, it wasn't terrible, but it was half the place. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't It was terrible. actually good. <laughs> I've definitely had lost. Okay, this is where we tell you guys to do a Canadian accent. So yeah. now it's your turn. <laughs> Tables have turned. Tables have turned. Oh, this, is, this is going to turn into some racism, <laughs> like xenophobic <laughs> rant, man. This is going to turn it really badly. <laughs> well, you say you say that a lot about. Oh. You always hear uh, the about about instead of about. About. Yeah. yeah you hear about. That a lot, but... Oh, yeah, for, for Canadians, about. like about. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. beautiful. Uh, as aside from accents, we actually have one last question left. Um, <laughs> we've gone off track completely, but in this, uh, to finish off the roundtable, Marissa and I both actually like to ask, um, we, we like to help out our younger audience or older audience uh, with informative advice on becoming a musician. So as we can really only speak from a Canadian perspective, we were wondering what advice would you offer to any aspiring Scottish artists? Yeah. Um, so I, I would still class myself as an aspiring Scottish music artist. I've in no means made it at all. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's creating those little small victories, like, you know, hitting a certain milestone or getting a, a certain number of streams or something. But also, on the other hand, you shouldn't be obsessed with the numbers and stuff because the main reason that you should be doing your music is for like your passion for music. That's the most important thing. Like if you're not enjoying it, there's really no point in doing it. And we touched on that earlier when we said, you know, you, you can't cater for everyone. So don't don't try and, you know, put your put yourself in a box, you know, and, and try and please too many people and stuff like that, you know. I spent a while trying to find what I wanted to sound like because I, I went through way too many genres and when I released like an album or something, it just wasn't cohesive. So my advice would be like, you know, find the type of music that you really enjoy listening to or, or writing or making and stuff like that and and use that and and don't get obsessed with the numbers, but you set yourself targets. Give give yourself something to work towards, uh, you know, small small victories and stuff like that. What do you guys think? Yeah, definitely. I'd agree with you there. Uh, I was going to say, apart from that, uh, find something that, like a niche for yourself or your act, like differentiates you from other people that could be similar. Like, why should they listen to you over the other person that's doing the same thing as you, maybe? Uh, so we've kind of got our own niche with the 50s stuff like that. But uh, if you're doing something that you know is similar to how someone else, like say if you're just doing like a kind of pop act, and if you're similar to the next guy doing a gig like three doors down, like why are they going to come to your gig? Like have something that gets the audience involved or something maybe like that. It can be as simple as that. Just make it memorable and get them involved. Mine, mine yeah. would just be don't do it. And it's like, it's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do music. Just don't do it. That's what I think. So. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, no, I think you've got, to, you've got to love what you're doing. Um, it's not easy a lot of the time. And... Um, yeah, if I don't come into it just thinking, oh, I want to be famous, I want to be the next sort of big thing. Yeah, I think most of us here would agree that if you can make a living off of touring and people connect with your stuff and, and you're you're com comfortable comfortably living, um, things are good and, and that's that's kind of what I'm striving for. Um, it's not to be like this big mega star that, that I think a lot of kids that are coming up think that their heads are in the clouds and it's not to say that they, they won't be, um, but... But yeah, it's just kind of have, don't set your, your expectations like so high. Just remember why you're doing it in the first place. Yeah, I definitely say like the also, expectations, not to set your expectations too high. Because if you start setting your expectations too high, like as like we were saying, like the small victories become not victories, you know? So like, yeah. you just got to enjoy it and uh, keep, keep doing what you love doing, you know? Yeah. The other thing that I would like to say is that 
doesn't matter how weird your music is and how niche and different. I believe that there's always public for any type of music if you play your cards very well. It's, it's all about understanding the right strategy to get to the right people. Yeah, I think like it's true uh, learning about how the music business works, you know, why you, what you're getting involved to, you know. I think it's very important for for any artist, you know. Yeah. Because that's that way you're gonna avoid to to make a lot of mistakes yeah. and waste your money on yeah. shit things, you know. And yeah. Waste money, waste time, and yeah. like, cause it could be the best music ever, or even the weirdest one. But if you don't know how to play, what what's the best thing to do? Depending on the type of music you make, is never gonna get to anyone. So it's really be aware of how things are, how the business is, and don't take things too personal if people hate your stuff, because yeah. there will mm. always be people that hate your stuff and will all put you down. And like that, that doesn't matter. What it matters is reaching the right people that they would actually like what you do. And they're always these people. That's all. Uh, I'll take this one actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when you're talking about the business side as well, I'm, I'm doing a, a university course that is music business. And uh, literally, the the advice that my lecturer gave me on day one was don't be a dick, just be nice, be you know easy to work with, be on time, be professional, and be pleasant to be around, because no one wants to work with you know the prodigy of guitars that's going to tell them why they're better than them, you know, it's yeah. it's yeah. just be nice no, so be good at your craft and enjoy your craft absolutely i totally agree with that but just don't ever think that you're above anybody else you need to be a, just a generally nice person whether you dislike the person you're talking to or not it's not about you know oh, I'm, be I'm better than you i'm better than this you know it is about these are fellow musicians these are fellow people that are trying to do the exact same thing i'm doing I'm, I'm not better than them. I'm not going to be a dick. I think that's something to really, really take away because it's uh, <laughs> it's something that can be forgotten really quickly when you're talking about the kind of the cutthroat aspect of the music industry. I think you just taught the kids a new word. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no one in Scotland, didn't he? <laughs> well, see, if this is to be like uh, from a Scottish point of view, kind of stuff that, like, it is because we're all Scottish, obviously. And uh, but what something that I think you will have to do is like if you're busking or something like that. When we're up in Glasgow, uh, like Liam, you'll know this. I don't know if you know it as well. Look, I don't know how it is in Edinburgh. We've not done it, but uh, you'll need to have to handle an audience at some point. Uh, maybe for the wrong reasons. I'm going to bring up a, an example of what happened to Nayo actually the other day we were out busking. There was this, there was this guy who was watching us for quite a while and uh, he came up to us and started talking to us. And it was clear when he was talking to us, he wasn't all all there in the moment. Yeah. He was maybe somewhere else as well with some substances. And <laughs> he was asking for a shot uh, to play and stuff like that. And we were telling him no. And then Nayo told him no again. And they kept they kept not listening to us, and then he eventually backed away, and he came back with intent to smack Niall across the face. And if it wasn't for the audience we had there, he might have got smacked across the face because yeah. quite a few of the folk from the audience came up to try and stop him when they seen what is he was coming with intention to kill this man. <laughs> Right. Can I also yeah. just say that's the most Scottish thing I've ever heard in my life. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> can, I just say, can, I, can I just say, by the way, even though I knew he was coming to attack me, I still was playing the drums. Like I need that I to was. be. Was. I need that to be in my memoirs, right? I didn't, I didn't flinch. Yeah, that's true. Oh, you, you need to have a thick skin for sure. Um, and I mean, that was some. No, that, that this isn't a reason why I need to have a thick skin. But I was offered a sweet potato. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a different And they just, they just broke a sweet potato in half and offered me. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was from a homeless man. It was really nice of them to offer. Um, but, yeah, there's just strange things that, that happen. You need to have a, a thick skin. You'll be told you're shite, you're this, you're that all the time. So, but, yeah, no, I, never, I never took them off on there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh wow, that's, no, that that's time. incredible advice. No, that, that is, time. yeah, that's incredible <laughs> advice. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for sharing. That was actually our last question for today. So we are out of time. If you guys are at home watching this roundtable with Vienna White on Twitch, make sure to follow us to be notified about all of our live streams that we do throughout the week. If podcasts are more your style, be sure to search up the Vienna White podcast on Spotify to hear this conversation. I'm Millie Rouge, one of your hosts. And I'm Marissa Kay, one of your other hosts for the show. You can find our band at Vienna White on Instagram. Vienna, like the city, white spelled with a Y, because we're trendy. Mm -hmm. And you can also join our Discord. There's a link below in Twitch. If you want to scroll down, you can find that link. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, www.viennawhite.com. All that jazz, links are all there. <laughs> we're going to get our guests to... Uh, tell them a little about themselves and kind of plug their socials as well. So, Idani, yes. can we get you to do your outro, please? You can find us uh, everywhere by typing Idani. This is uh, I D E I N I. Yeah. So, very, very straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we, yeah, we're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify. Yeah, posting covers and the next EP soon. Luke, can we get you next? Uh, so thanks for having me, by the way. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at LukeHunter04. It's written just there. Uh, and on Facebook, it's Luke Hunter Music. Um, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, all your favorite streaming platforms, they're all Luke Hunter as well. Uh, you can stream my new song, Another Minute, which uh, came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, check it out. Let me know if you like it. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Cheers. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, Ian, can we get you next? Yeah, so my handles are just my name, Ian Wilson, I A I N Wilson. Um, and some Instagram, I post quite a lot of covers and like songwriting stuff that I'm doing at the moment. So, um, yeah, you can follow me there. And as before, Spotify, Apple Music, all that jazz, Ian Wilson. Perfect. Liam, can we get you next? Yep. Um, so you can find me on uh, Facebook, Liam Doyle Music. Um, the rest of them is. Instagram Liam Doyle 1994 um, and then there is Spotify, Apple Music, all the usual places uh, I just released something yesterday uh, with Samaritans so if, um, it's a pretty powerful story behind that um, so if anyone wants to check that out it's called Just Reach Out um, and yeah, thank you so much for, for having me on. Of course, thank you so much for joining us. And last but not least, the best bad influence. Alex, can you do your outro? Uh, well, you can find me and Niall at uh, The Best Bad Influence on Facebook and Instagram. Our own music is out on Spotify and all major streaming platforms uh, under that very name. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Of course. Thank you all so much for joining us. This was such a fun conversation. Yes. I haven't laughed this much in a long time. So uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you on next time we stream Thanks together all. is Sunday. Sunday. So we'll see you all on Sunday. Stay safe, everyone.